if later in the game there is a way to to make this a pass pawn you should not ignore it Okay, bishop to e7, bishop to c4, all is well. Not really an openings uh, seminar, so we're not gonna not gonna focus too much on the specifics here. Knight to c6, rook to e1, pawn b5, bishop back to f1, rook to b8. So first of all, I should say I'm looking at the database here. This position has been played 58 times. Actually, 50, 60 times because there's some other moves. So this position has been played 60 times. 70% of the games are draws. So it shows you that this position is acceptable for black. 18% um, of, the, of the games are... 16% uh, are wins for white and 14% are wins for black. So I would call this a pretty even position. So in this line of play, there are mutual chances. But the way the way Karyakin outplays Van Welly and comes up with these brilliant ideas just shows you his class, right? And the reason why he challenged Carlson to a world chess championship. Right? I mean many people weren't a fan of Karyakin. They're like, who's Karyakin? Right? But you gotta give credit where it's due. The, Many people, you know, live to get a chance to play for the world championship. He did. He lost. Big whoop. He was this close away from, from it. You know, it is what it is. So, bishop to g5. Standard approach. Which piece guards this square? Right? Which piece guards this square? Oh, that knight? Oh, okay. Give me that. All right. Van Welly was like, no, you can have this, though. You can, you can have that if you want. He's like, I'm not, I'm not giving you this knight because that knight's going to help me guard that weak square along with this bishop and along with this knight. That's going to help me fight for control over this pothole I, I gave you. But if you want this, you can have that. And Karyagin, who's no beginner is like, no way, man. I don't want that thing. That You mean you want me to take that bishop on e7 with my bishop? No way. So he played bishop to c1. Which seems like a passive retreating move. But in chess, you got to know which pieces to trade. And by, if by retreating, you keep your long-term good pieces, then you just have to do it. Right? You can't just... You can't be like, damn it, I don't want to retreat, so I'm going to trade off my good piece for his bad piece. You can't be impulsive in chess. you gotta, you got to just make the right decision, even if it's slightly uncomfortable, like playing the move bishop to c1. you got to recognize this bishop on e7 is not a good piece. Your bishop's struggling right now to find its useful position, but it's not a bad piece. It's not obstructed by the central pawns, you know? Okay, so queen b6, now there's an attack on the on the pawn, so queen to d2. He's thinking, well, you know, you're not giving me a good square over here, so I'm gonna play b3, bishop to b2, and then get my pieces into the game. So that's what happens. Knight goes back to f6, Pawn h3 to stop the very annoying bishop to g4. Why would that be annoying? Because after bishop to g4, we would be attacking this knight, which is at least for the moment keeping the d4 square under control. So h3 makes sense. Rook e8. Queen back to d1, which is, sorry guys, which is very, um, let me get back to the situation. I pressed one wrong arrow key which is sort of a funny looking move. Uh, other moves could have been played. So queen to d1, he's thinking maybe I'll go here again 
and try to take out that knight. And uh, Van Welly was like, all right, man, enough is enough. You're not coming back to G5. I'm cutting it out. And then Karyakin said, all right, all right, all right. You, you know, you, you, you're not allowing me to do the basics, so now I'm going to have to do the not basics, but I'm going to show you why I played a world championship and you played in the Dutch championship. Okay, and I hope he doesn't hear this because he's going to be like, you Giannatos, I'm never going to, I'm never going to do a camp for you again. Okay, so bishop to f8 and uh, a4, you know, chipping away at that queen side. It's sort of like you're using this pawn as a hook for attacking and opening up lines. You're trying to open up your bishop. You're trying to open up your rook. So, very logically, Van Welly played b4. He's like, you want to open up all these things. I don't want to let you open up all those things. So, I'm going to keep it closed. And uh, knight to d5. And so, finally here, the pawn structure has changed. And this is uh, the theme of our lecture today, which is a pass pawn in, or not a pass pawn. I keep calling it a pass pawn. Not a pass pawn yet. It's not a pass pawn yet. It's important to note that. A pawn which has crossed into enemy ter territory, like this pawn here on d5, even though it's not passed, it still serves as it still serves as an anchor, if you will, for pieces in the enemy position. On top of that, if later in the game there is a way to, to make this a pass pawn, you should not ignore it. Meaning, even if you have to sacrifice a piece to make this not passed pawn a passed pawn, you need to have that in your brain as a possibility. So, knight a5, and the reason for knight a5, as opposed to some other move, is he didn't want white to be able to play bishop c4 and setting up, you know, that sort of sacrifice and sort of like the Kasparov thing against Leko, where he opens up his bishop. So he plays knight a5, which actually makes sense. Uh, bishop to e3, so he decides against playing the bishop here. He comes up with a very nice idea. Where does black have play? This is not a trick question. Just, just tell me. Where, is, where does black have play? his counterplay, and this is very common in the Sicilian, where is black looking to gain counterplay? This backwards pawn on the open C file, right? And this is the a direct weakness. Now, having said that, F5 mobilizing the king side makes a lot of sense. That's more of a strategic thing, a, a plan moving forward for black to mobilize their majority. But black has a clear point of interest on the C file, the open C file. And as a consequence of this pawn, it's not easy to advance to secure our pawns because of the move en passant. So as I saw some of you mentioning it in the chat, Karyakin played a very nice maneuver here, knight to d2, with the idea of putting the knight on c4 and trying to block the c file from black's queen's attack. Which also, again, all this makes sense. Van Welly played the move that some of you were saying. f5. Knight c4, Karyakin played. Because that was the whole point. He's trying to reduce the pressure on the c file while improving the placement of his pieces. So, bishop to e7. Queen h5, the queen zips over to the king's side. As a consequence of this f5 push, we see that this diagonal is opened up, so there's a threat on the rook. Rook went to f8, which probably Van Welly was like, I sort of wanted to do that anyway, because I got these pawns coming down. And um, takes, takes, 
And now something very cool happens. So Karyakin takes on h6. And first of all, Vanwelli did not miss this, I should say, right? Uh, he's too good to have not seen that bishop takes h6 was possible. So I needed to I need to say that, right? I, I need to say to give him his due respect that he saw bishop takes h6 and thought, if Karyakin wants a draw, let him have the draw. Like whatever, right? Takes check, 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 draw. Right? Check, 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 back and forth, back and forth, draw. It's fine. No problem. I'm playing black pieces. I equalize. It's a draw. Big, big deal. Um, so Karyakin does this. He, he, he takes the pawn and, and, you know, he repeats. And then he's thinking to himself, how do I, get, you know, if I want to try to win this position, and he probably already saw it, right? And so I'm just narrating like I do. I fake narrate. Because I want to help you go. I want to help you get through the game. Right? So he's thinking, how do I get, if I don't want to draw here, how do I get another piece into the attack on the king? And he's like, well, there's one piece that makes sense, which is the rook lift. Now, before... Before we talk about that, you have to start to think about this lecture topic, right? The lecture topic is pushing your not passed pawn to open up in free squares and to cause havoc. So your not passed pawn and the only pawn you have in enemy territory that could be a pass pawn is the pawn on d5. And one might see that in this position, if this pawn were not here, then bishop to c4 would come in hot. Right? Bishop c4 would come in hot. So we're looking at this and we're going, okay, so. Giannatus is showing us a lecture, and it's about pushing the not passed pawn. And this is the not passed pawn. And in order to push it, we have to break down the d6 pawn, right? We got to get that d6 pawn to move, and we get our bishop into the game. So, Karyakin first played the move rook to e3. So, it's a combination of what you guys are saying in the chat. So, that's good. So, he plays rook to e3 with a very basic threat, which is simply to bring the rook over and then ladder checkmate your opponent. Van Welly saw this, and Van Welly played here. I'm sure that Luke Van Welly saw this coming. What he did not see, <laughs> I'm almost sure of that, what he did not see is Karyakin's next move, So, rook takes e5. And this was the brutal move. And the key move of the whole sequence. Which was, we force this pawn forward, then we take the pawn, and we're threatening checkmate. Hence, d takes e5 was, was played. And... Uh, we have check, and then d6. And here comes the promotion, or the, the, the advancement of the not pass pawn, which has become passed at the cost of a rook. But check this out. The bishop is also opened up as well. So there's this beautiful geometry. It's, it's a combination of the, queen, the king being weak, 
the pawn being able to advance and clearing the bishop for that. It's all coming in as one beautiful Picasso painting that Karyakin is, is, uh, is doing here. Rook f7 was played by Van Welly. It is what it is. Bishop to c4, the whole idea. Now the threat is queen to g6 check and attacking the pin piece. By the way, I, there's probably nothing wrong with taking this, but bishop c4 is such a boss move, just basically saying, I mean, you cannot guard all the heat that's coming your way, right? You cannot put it out. So bishop to f5, and the very casual pawn takes e7, and white wins, resign. Van Welly resigned, and I think rightfully so, because we're still going to get this, right? We still have this action. That's not going away. This pawn is a problem. Queen f6 is a problem, where we attack the rook and we attack the bishop, thanks to this monster pin. So, yikes. Just brutal. Absolutely brutal. Hi, I'm Peter Giannatos, founder of the Charlotte Chess Center. Subscribing to our YouTube channel is statistically proven to limit your blunders.